this is a Honda Clarity. It is a plug-in hybrid, and today we're going to review it. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, Guys in a Ride. Ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Hey Rob, today we're taking a look at a Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid. That's right, but say, before we get on with the review, if you'd like to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you'd like to know about all the technology that's built inside of them, especially this one, mm -hmm. plus you like cool collector car stories, Take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right. So, what do you say, Nate? Hey, I say, let's, let's go, go for a ride. ride. All right, so welcome to our detailed video on the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen. We're going to start with the driver's information center. And again, all the buttons that we need uh, are these cursor arrows right here and the inf uh, information button right here and the enter button in the middle. Okay, so um, starting off with, of course, you've got a battery gauge over here. You've got a fuel gauge over here. You do have a seven gallon fuel tank. Um, and then over here, of course, you got your speedometer and your power, use power or um, charging power. You know, your shows, shows whether you're using power or charging it. And then, of course, you got your driver's information stuff right here in the middle. And that's what we'll be changing. Um, you do have a trip meter at the top here, so you can change from trip A to trip B, okay? And um, and then up at the top here, you've got the gear uh, selector indicator and then your adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist stuff up here. All right, let's get started. In order to access the information uh, in the driver's information area, you're gonna need to press this button with the eye on it. So if I press that, you're gonna notice all of these little dots at the bottom of the screen. So I'm gonna back up and we're gonna start from the beginning. So this one here is like um, uh, energy use meter. So it's very similar to this graph right here, only when you're charging, the car goes down below the middle line and when you're using power, it goes above the middle line. It's just a different graphic. Press the information button again. I'll go one to the right. This one will show you where your power is going, which, you know, how it's going out to the front wheels and then uh, whether it's charging or using battery power. Press the I button again. This one here will tell your average fuel use. And if you use your trip button, you can change it to trip A. Okay, so you can notice on trip A, we had about 113.8 miles per gallon average. Not bad. Hmm. All right. Hit the information button again. We'll go over to one to the right. This one here gives you more of a graph for your uh, miles per gallon here. All right, we'll press the information button again. And here we'll go over to this icon. And here it tells you an electric vehicle, you know, you had zero miles range. In, in the HV range, you had 101 miles and a total of 101 miles. So kind of tells you how long you've been riding on battery and how long you've been using a combination of battery and, and motor. Okay, if we go over one more, we'll get the wrench icon, we'll press the enter button. Okay, it tells you when your service is due. Okay, we'll press the information button again. We'll go over here. You can also access your media from here. So if I press it, uh, now it shows what's playing and you notice the little left right arrows that show up and the up and down arrows if I use the up and down arrows I'm going to change the source like I'll go from Bluetooth to uh, to to you know AM FM radio this one here allows me to go left and right to do a few other things here so if I want to if, if I could skip a song I'm in Pandora so it won't go backwards um, but you can like skip tracks. So that's really nice. All right, I'm gonna press the information button again. Go over, this is your cell phone. There really isn't anything I can do here. If, if I were actually using my phone, calling on it, whatever, then I would see some more information displayed on there. But for now, that's all it will show. Okay, 
this has the capability of receiving and reading you text messages or SMS messages. Um, so, obviously, of course, I can't access that because my phone isn't paired uh, to do that. Okay, one more over here. I've got the gear wheel, so we're going to have a bunch of our uh, different settings in here. Okay, so if I press the enter button again, I can do the charger timer setup. This part is a little more complicated. You notice the up and down arrow. So if I just use the down arrow, I can exit. And that's, that's my only choice is here. Okay, so if I go to charge timer setup and I click enter, you can use the up and down arrows. You'll notice the little tiny ones. I can, if I use my up and down, I can select it to off or on. But then I have to click the enter button to set it. Okay? And it goes back to this screen. So if I go back again and I hit it again and I turn it to on, now you're going to get a few more options. See what I mean by a little confusing? All right, so I can change the time. I can change it to full. So a full charge or a time charge. If I click the enter button, it then moves down and says, when do you want to start? And then you can use the up and down arrows. Um, and then you can set the, even even the, uh, the, the, the seconds or the minutes, excuse me. Press the enter button down here. You get the end time for hours and the end time for minutes. Okay. Now, I, I don't want to leave it that way, so I'm going to go back and I'm just going to turn it off. Oops. Oh, no. See, it won't let you... The, the frustrating thing is it won't let you go back if you make a mistake. So I need to go all the way through this. Click it, enter again. Click there again. And make sure I use my up or down arrow to select off. So that part, not as easy to use as, as we would like to see. But, hey... And then I press the information button again. I'll go over one more. This is what I would press on here if I wanted to change the distance units from kilometers to miles or gallons to liters. Okay. And then, so that's that's it for, for all that information in there. It's it, overall quite simple to operate. I just don't like the charging part of it. That I, I wish they could simplify a little bit. Okay. Right. So, moving uh, on over here to the right side of the steering wheel, this is all your cruise control stuff. So you got, um, uh, over here, this is the main button. This is what will turn your adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist on or off. Okay, and they'll show up on your dashboard uh, on, on the right. This will turn on the physical guidelines for, for um, you know, so it'll light up as a graphic when you're going over a line. And then um, over here, you've got your gap setting for your adaptive cruise control, um, your cancel, your resume, and your set plus your plus and minus. And, and this does have adaptive cruise control, including slow traffic. Over here on the left, there were a few buttons that I missed. Voice command, of course, will um, it'll affect your, your music uh, and your phone. And then over here, you've got phone on, phone off, or a back button. Okay, so if you're in something here and you want to go back, you can you can uh, press on that and it should go back. All right, let's move over to the infotainment screen. All right, the screen itself has got all touch buttons, uh, all soft touch. There are no physical buttons whatsoever, which is not my favorite thing. I, I like having at least a power and a volume. Um, this is a little difficult to, to control because um, you have to keep sliding your finger back to the bottom and up, but but it, but it works. Um, your home screen here, of course, shows you all the different apps, your auto, your phone, settings, uh, smartphone connection, and then the Honda link, um, which you can also download on your phone as an app. You got a menu button and a back button and then a bright and dimness for your screen. Now you can just click it once and then you can use the plus and minus to affect it, or you can just click this Makes it a little bit dimmer for nighttime driving. One more click actually shuts the screen off if you don't want it on. And one more click brings the screen back up. Now your audio will still work, uh, even though the screen is off. Uh, this is a, an eight inch screen. This is a, uh, on this particular base model, it's a six speaker system, okay? Um, of course, this does have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth. 
uh, and um, AM FM radio. Uh, it comes with a subscription, like a three month trial to the Sirius XM satellite. All right. Now, one of the things that Honda has on this particular vehicle is the right mirror camera. So on the left uh, turn signal stock, you have a button at the end. If you push that button, you can activate the camera right away. Okay, so now my right uh, camera on my right mirror is on. And, and I like that you can turn it on or off whenever you want it. It also turns on automatically when you turn on the right signal. The backup camera uh, works really well. You've got a wide angle, you've got a narrower angle, and then you kind of got a straight down view at the back, okay? Uh, it does have dynamic swivel guidelines, which are really nice. So we'll just take it back up here a second. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at what's actually on the uh, infotainment system. So to start with, you know, you've got this kind of graphic representation for audio, you've got it for phone, and you've got it for info. If I swipe to the left here, you get smartphone collection, settings, and the Honda link. And then these ones are blank. Okay, so what I want to do is start actually here on settings because this is where we can get in to some of your vehicle safety settings. So here we go. Now, uh, on here, um, I'm going to go into just a couple, but they're all just a click, and then they give menus inside of them. So I'm going to go into system, or sorry, excuse me, vehicle first, because this is where we can access some of your safety systems, and they're right under driver assist system setup. So I just click on it, and you've got forward collision warning distance, um, uh, adaptive cruise control, forward vehicle de detect beep, lane keeping assist suspend beep, and road departure mitigation setting. So to change any of those, you click on them, and then I can say change the forward collision warning distance to long, normal, or short. Anything you click on is going to ask you to say, click on yes to confirm or no to reject. So, of course, I'm going to click no for now, but you can click, of course, whatever you want. Adaptive cruise control. You can have the, the beep on or off. And what happens is on adaptive cruise control in these cars, um, when, the, the, when, the, when the system detects a car ahead of them and locks on so it can get, uh, adjust the speed, um, it gives a beep. If you don't want to hear that beep all the time, you can turn it off. Okay. I'm going to hit my back button here. Uh, lane keeping assist, suspend beep. Okay, So that's another beep that comes on. If you want that off, you can turn that off or you can turn it on. I will, of course, just leave that off where it was set. And then you have road departure mitigation. So this is when you stray over the lines. You can have it set to be like a, a, a normal, wide, warning only, or narrow. So if you're the kind of person that kind of goes between the lines a little bit and you're tired of the car warning you or, or the steering wheel moving all the time, you can change it to wide. Okay, That'll give you a little more um, forgiveness um, before it warns you. You can set it to narrow if you want to really keep the car right in the you know right in the middle of the lane, or you can say I only want the warning. I don't want the steering wheel to to move on its own. So you have those settings right there. And again, you click on them, and then you click yes to accept or no to reject. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, here you do have um, if I go down here right up oh, right here meter setup. Meter setup here, you've, you can adjust the outside temperature display. Yes. So the car has a, an outdoor display for temperature, and you can make that either uh, more than it's really or less than it really is. <laughs> All right. You can also reset the trip A or trip B timing. You can adjust alarm volume. You can uh, see the, uh, the fuel efficiency backlight here. Okay. You can have that on or off. And then if I go down here a little bit here, speed and distant units. So this is where you change from like kilometers to miles per hour or gallons to liters. Again, you simply click on it. It asks you to click yes to accept and no to reject. Okay. All right. Let's go back. And we're going to take a look at one more here. Um, maintenance info. So under here, it just says service due in five months. Okay. And if something particular comes up, it will list it down here. And then you can um, select items to reset. So if I click on that, 
you can see all the things that will come up in the warnings. Oil filter, chassis inspection, tire rotation, dust and pollen filler, filter, transmission oil, spark plugs, engine coolant, brake fluid, air cleaner. I mean, all of those things come up. So it's, it's quite a thorough list. Okay, we're going to get back out of this menu. And we're going to go over here to audio. Under here, up here, you got three tabs, and actually, you have a little arrow. If you go over to the right, you have other as well. Okay, so we're going to start with AM and FM. So, under AM and FM tab, you can turn the HD radio FM or in AM mode to auto or to analog only. Okay, and you just hit the back button again. You can have your radio data system info on or off. Okay, if you go to XM, you get a few different settings. You can have the tune start on, the sports flash set up. Um, you can do that. You can get traffic and weather set up. You do have to register for that. And the multiple channel mix preset, which currently is off. Okay. Under Bluetooth, right now, it's just going to say, you know, here are the devices that are listed. Um, and you can select different ones. And then if I go to other, um, every time your media plays like off of Bluetooth and stuff, it displays, you know, it, it does its best anyways to display the, the cover art. And you can turn that on or off. And then um, also the audio source pop-up, um, that automatically just pops up on the screen and tells you where your music is coming from. You can turn that on or off. All right, we'll hit the back. Um, we're going to go into one more. You do have two cameras on this car, and this is where you access them. You have the rear camera and lane watch. Now, rear camera, of course, is in the back, and that's your backup camera. Lane watch is on your right uh, outside mirror, and anytime you turn on the uh, right turn signal, you see from the, ca the camera's view in the monitor, or there's actually a button on the left side of the, uh, the light stock um, on the, uh, behind the stream wheel that you can turn that on automatically. If I go to rear camera, your options are to have fixed guidelines on or off or dynamic guidelines on or off. Again, just a click, click on or off. Okay, I'm gonna, of course, leave them where they are, hit the back button. Lane watch. Again, um, you can have turn a show with turn signal on or off. Display time after turn signal is off. So this would mean that after you uh, cancel the turn signal, instead of the camera going off immediately, you could set it for a two second delay. So you, you keep seeing uh, the image from the camera in here for two more seconds. And then you have a reference line which you can turn on or off. Okay, we'll go back. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back one more here. And I'm gonna scroll over here, and you get you got three little icon areas here. And so the way it works out is, if you kind of want to see everything, just press the main button, the big one. Okay, then you get kind of it. It'll tell you the source pop up here. Um, I'm gonna go get out of that. That would eventually go away on its own. Um, but you have audio menu, change source, sound settings, and station list. So that, if I go back a step here. That was everything you saw in these little icons right here. So by pressing the big one, you kind of get everything. But if you just need one certain thing, you know, then you can click on that um, and then you can change sources. Okay. Um, you have your two left and right buttons, your seek buttons right here. Um, and then if, if you have the actual radio station showing on up here. This is where you adjust the sound. So the bass, the middle, the treble, you can adjust fade and balance here. And this does have speed volume compensation. So the faster you drive, the louder the music gets. The slower you drive, the softer it gets. And you can adjust the sensitivity right here or turn it off. Okay, we're gonna go back here. Uh, phone is the same way. These are shortcuts and some of them are kind of great out now because my phone's not connected, but you can just click on phone and then it would bring up that information. Um, you have phone menu, phone book, call history, speed dial, and then whatever is happening with your phone currently right here on a call. All right, same thing. And under info, there are a couple of shortcuts again here. And then if I just click on info, I should see everything. So, okay, I get trip computer, vehicle, energy, voice info, clock, and system device information. Okay, and I'm just going to click back to get rid of that. But um, under here, I can have current drive or history of trip A. So if I click current drive, 
I can see my fuel economy information here. I can also click history of trip A just right here, so I don't have to go back to that screen. I can also delete the history. All right. Um, the last icon I want to show you about is this one right here. Okay, so you there are some apps that you can install on your car. You'll have to look them up. I do not have a list of those. Um, but if you looked at um, um, apps that are available for download on um, a Honda, you should get a list. Okay, but you do have a built-in calculator. It pops right up in case you need one right in your car. You have an app installer, uh, you can see your downloads there, and then the widget is empty right now, but anything you download would basically show up in here. Okay, so overall, a really nice system. Thanks for watching. And if you push that, <laughs> the, camera fall, the camera falls over. <laughs>